Hello and welcome to Gabbett Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're looking at a question from Joshua Slaymaker and it's about the uh, pipeline for clients, so selling your models or uh, passing them on to clients for studios and so forth. So I've got a few questions here, so where do you put the origin points, uh, do you include higher or lower resolution texture sets, do you rig every character, is your process different for different clients and I'll talk about things to watch out for within that as well. So first of all, I've had lots of different experience working for different clients and different studios, uh, but this is all my opinion and based on my experience. So it's not the definitive answer. The first question saying, so do you have any steps for every asset before passing it on? Yes, I do. And it links to the other question he asks, which is uh, where do you put the origin points and resolution sets? So I'll start with origin points. Um, so um, is the bottom center of each model where you would put the origin point and sometimes it's called the center point sometimes it's called the pivot point so I might sort of chop and change between uh, those terms but yes you want to put it always at the bottom center of your object unless otherwise specified um, so uh, you put it in the center of the world as well so let's say I've got a house and I'm um, exporting my house put it in the center of the world make sure that origin point is um, in the bottom center in the center of the world, then you can export it. Now, I've said that, but it does depend on your object. So if you've got something like a cannonball that uh, rotates whilst it's flying through the air, they'll probably specify this, but you'll want the object center in the center of that object because it's rotating around the center. So if at any point your object is going to rotate, you need to think about that origin point being the pivot point, and that's gonna be important uh, for you and the studio, of course. Now, within that, I did mention the origin center or the world center so the origin being at the world center also you want to have it as a scale of one um, so all your scale is set to one doesn't matter about the dimensions but the scale must be set to one and there should be no rotation on it uh, in terms of your dimensions it's good practice to have kind of real world dimensions so things set up in meters so if you've got a character they're about 1.8 meters tall or whatever it might be uh, and that's good practice but it doesn't actually make a huge amount of difference if you're exporting, let's say, um, um, this house, then this model, then this model, um, it, that, because they can reset it quite easily. As long as everything's set to one, uh, the, or, um, the transform positions are set to zero and the rotation's all at zero, you should be okay. But generally it's good practice to set it up in real world measurements. So what about uh, including high and low resolution texture sets? So when you export uh, your models, you obviously have to export textures with them. Uh, they might be PBRs, you might have lots of textures that you're exporting. Um, you might have to set those textures up for Unity. So sometimes the roughness channel goes within an alpha and it, it gets a bit complicated and that's a different subject. But in terms of resolution, uh, the studio should specify what resolution they want. And it's very rare in my experience, uh, that they'll ask for different size textures. I suppose if they were wanting to use the model in something like a cutscene, then they might want a higher resolution textures um, to what they're using in game, perhaps. Um, but it's, a good, again, good practice to always uh, paint or texture with high resolution textures and reduce them to the size that they want in case they suddenly turn around and say actually we could do all this, We're, performance is great, we want to up the resolution of the textures and then you can just up the resolution and in fact um, I often just send my textures across in their sort of native 2k and then they can reduce them down if they want to. Now this might be different if you're selling your models you probably want to sell your models with different size texture packs and to make it easier for the client. Um, if you're not going to, if you can't be bothered to do that then go with a high resolution texture that they can then easily reduce but um, it, it just makes it look good and look more professional if you've got different sizes, um, so mobile as asset or AAA asset, not that you'd have the same asset like that, but it gives the um, buyer some options uh, and that's good practice. The next question is, do you rig every character? So that depends on the studio and the client. I've worked for lots of indie clients, uh, small studios, and they want me to do everything. Um, so uh, model, texture, rig and animate uh, and that's a bit of a headache to be honest uh, and it can be quite tough because I'm not an expert rigger or animator uh, but I'm okay at the other stuff uh, and uh, it's good to learn all those skills it's good to have a knowledge of them um, but generally speaking if you're looking at sort of uh, big slight even medium-sized studios they'll have someone to do the rigging uh, rather than expecting you to do it all and on that point it's really important to understand the client's needs so if they come to you and say I want a character 
you need to know exactly what they want built modeled rigged or whatever uh, so ask them those questions before giving any idea of price so let's say a client came to me and said I want a character I would first say uh, what sort of character are you looking for what sort of quality are you looking for uh, then I'd ask questions like do you want it rigged do you want it animated uh, what sort of textures PBR hand painted so forth because all that information is going to be really important for when you're pricing your model as to how much you have to put into it and you'd be surprised there's lots of smaller studios out there that are just starting out and they're tinkering in the idea of creating games and they'll come to you especially if you're, you're just starting out as well uh, so you need to be clear and you need to kind of inform them what the process is quite often because they might be really good at coding their game ready for that side of things and just used uh, asset packs from online or something and not really realizing the effort uh, and time that goes into uh, doing all those different stages so you need to be really clear with them uh, and communicate with them exactly and asking them exactly what they want next question is your process vastly different depending on the client uh, definitely uh, different clients have different polygon count sizes usually they go in vertex count rather than face count um, and I think that's different game engines or the way the game engine understands it doesn't make a huge amount of difference but it, there is a difference there and if they're really strict on that then they'll talk vertex count rather than face count that's much less strict now but it's still important you can't suddenly go to 50 million uh, and expect that to be okay uh, but more important is the texture sizes most of the time uh, and maybe it's for a client that wants it for 3D printing so that's completely different and you go quite high poly with that um, again you can't go super high poly because the computer will lag when it's trying to work it out in the slicer program for printing so let's say you've got a 10 million uh, poly face count uh, model you will want to reduce that down uh, and you want to reduce it as far as you can without losing any quality and the decimate modifier is really good at that uh, generally speaking so that's all the questions that Joshua asked. Um, there's a couple of things I would watch out for and things that or mistakes that I often make when sending things off uh, to clients to review. Uh, Unity does not show uh, both sides of your face. So there's a, the normal direction, the face direction. There is one side that will be visible and the back side will not be visible unless you use special shaders within side Unity. And generally the studios don't want to use those. So you'll have to, if, there's, if you see the inside of a house, let's say, you'll have to build some walls on the inside as well as the outside. Um, and check your face direction because if one of your faces are pointing the wrong direction, then it won't uh, come out in unity. It will just sort of be see-through and seen from the wrong side. Um, and that's quite easy to do in Blender. Just go to overlays, face direction, um, or face orientation, one of the two, uh, and you'll see it in red uh, and just reverse those normals and make sure you've done that. The other is doubles. Surprisingly, uh, it's, <laughs> it's quite a common problem, even for me, and I've been doing this for years. Um, so I'll be making objects, like let's say a house again, and I've done a roof, but I've accidentally duplicated the roof because I'm making lots of these houses and I put it on top of each other. Now, Blender's quite good uh, at showing us uh, what it should look like um, and hiding the fact that there's some doubles there. Uh, whereas Unity doesn't like it and you'll get flicker and it's not good practice anyway so you need to get rid of it so once you've joined all your objects together at the end before exporting uh, just remove doubles and it, remove, it will remove any of those uh, duplicates uh, nice and easily that's the easy way to do it um, hopefully that will work for you anyway okay so I hope that's insightful for you thank you to Joshua for sending me these questions I thought it was quite interesting and sharing it with everybody out there um, is hopefully like I say, insightful. If you've got any questions you want to ask me, then do email me. I can't make any promises that I'll put a video together like this, but if you like this format, then obviously give it a thumbs up and uh, say something in the comments about maybe your experiences. Uh, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.